Welcome back to our studies. This practical theology we're looking at uh, currently from the book of Acts. And we're looking at Acts chapter 2 verses 37 through, seven, through uh, 41. And so let's keep that in mind as we as we keep this study going in the book of Acts. Uh, in our last uh, presentation or study, we heard Peter preach a pretty powerful sermon on the day of Pentecost. And after Peter was finished preaching, and uh, he preached with force and with power, and remember this was the day of Pentecost when God had poured out his Holy Spirit and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues and and speaking out loudly, so loudly that a crowd came around, and of course many of them heard the gospel, that is, the wonders of God and the glories of God being spoken of in their own native languages by a bunch of Galileans who had never studied those languages, never learned those languages. It was a miracle to start with, and the miracle continues uh, to, to this day, in fact. And so as we look this look at this, where Peter had just finished uh, preaching, and uh, what he said to them really struck them pretty hard. In fact, uh, he, was, he was facing them down. They stood here now transfixed uh, uh, by the display of about 120 people exploding with reports and records of the wonderful works of God uh, in their various mother tongues. Suddenly, the living God was facing them down with their sin, their wickedness, and their duplicity, and their guilt. And here they stood, probably some of them trembling in fear. And the next verse that uh, we read uh, after this very highly anointed preaching by Peter, it brought them to a place of desperation and fear. And they were wondering, how can we fix this thing? And the next verse we read is Acts 2, verse 37, where when the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, Brothers, what shall we do? They were desperate. They realized that they had killed the Son of God. Brothers, what, what can we do? And uh, what brothers are they talking about? Well, these new brothers in the Lord, the newly formed church of the Lord Jesus Christ, all the brothers and sisters in the Lord Jesus Christ. And a new family was born, a new kingdom was introduced to the earth, and a new force uh, became apparent right there in Jerusalem where God began the building of the church of Jesus Christ, which is now billions of people around the world who claim to be Christians, who who follow the Lord Jesus Christ, many of them out of ritual and, and habit, and yet those who have come to a real knowledge of what Jesus meant when he said, you must be born again, uh, that, that group of people are the ones that are on fire, like Peter was on the day of Pentecost. We have the answer to what the world needs and to the desperate fear they face. And so they said, brothers, brothers, what, what can we do? Peter and the 11 other apostles, uh, Jesus had chosen a new brotherhood and was born, not just the 12, but the 120. And of course, uh, as we read through this, uh, we, we, we come to some amazing information. Verse 38, Peter replied, repent and be baptized. Repent. You know what that means? Being genuinely sorry for and wanting to abandon your sin. Repent and be baptized. That is in water and uh, uh, the baptism of righteousness that Peter, uh, the pardon me, that uh, 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 John the Baptist uh, was preaching before Jesus came and revealed himself, opening the way for the Savior to come. And he had preached a, a baptism 
of repentance. And we still practice that today in our churches when people become Christians, when, they, when they're born again. We practice what is called water baptism. Now, it may take different forms in different churches, but it is something that we do to follow the instructions of the Lord. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And they knew their sins at that point. Peter had preached a powerful sermon. You crucified the Son of God. You sent him to his death. You shed his blood. It, it's on you. That's your sin. Well, what can we do about it? Well, Peter gives the answer. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, that's remarkable. Here were a bunch of people who collectively were murderers, uh, guilty of injustice, guilty of hate against the Son of God, guilty of putting him to, his, in, to that horrible death on the cross. And God, through Peter says, through the apostles, all of them says, said, we extra tell you, repent and be baptized every one of you for the forgiveness of your sins, including the sin of putting Jesus to death, for the give forgiveness of sins. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. In other words, Peter was saying right there, in, in answer to the questions of the crowd, what you hear now, remember he said, these are not drunk with wine as you, you suppose. This is a fulfillment of the prophet Joel. And what God said through Joel has happened today. The Spirit of God has been poured out. And these people who've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, speaking with other tongues, a flame of fire seemed to come on the heads of every one of them. The city came together like a mob and were watching and listening and and wondering what was going on. They were amazed. Some of them said they were drunk. And Peter said, they're not drunk with wine. This is a fulfillment of the prophet Joel telling us that God in, his la in the last days would pour out his spirit. And we are still living in those last days. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I know there are some watching today who perhaps have certainly repented and been baptized in water. But have you received the baptism in the Holy Spirit? Because this promise is to you. Listen, this promise is for you and your children and to all who are afar off, for all whom the Lord God will call. This is not just a one-time incident on the day of Pentecost. This was to give life and power to the church throughout all of its history. Remember Acts chapter 1 verse 8, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be witnesses unto me. And later on, and uh, after this, uh, Jesus told, uh, these signs will follow them that believe. They'll heal the sick, they'll cast out demons, and they'll do wondrous works in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ through the power of the Spirit in them working. A clear answer, a sharp and Right to the point answer. No soft and comfortable answers. No cuddly trying to comfort them, but facing them down with the fact that they're sinners. They need to repent. They need to be baptized in water. And you too will receive this powerful gift from the Holy Spirit, from God himself that Jesus had promised. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are afar off for all whom the Lord has, our God will call. A clear answer. No beating around the bush. Straight to the point. It was not an invitation to anything other than full repentance and accepting Jesus Christ for who he really is. And then in verse 40 we read, With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Well, that's kind of like today, isn't it? We have a corrupt generation we're living in nowadays, uh, right from the top to the bottom, from the east to the west, and up and down throughout the country, we see corruption at every level of society. And 
So Peter challenges the people there in that day in a corrupt society with, with many words. He warned them, warned them and pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. That's pretty good. Uh, that's quite a sermon. It's quite a result to preaching. But that's what spirit-filled preaching is. It's filled with power and conviction, makes people understand their guilt and want to repent and fix it. And the only way they could fix it was to repent, be baptized, and also receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. The, that day became the most significant day in, in, the, in the land, uh, perhaps in the world at that point, let's face it, when 3,000 people came to know Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, accepted him as not just the crucified Christ, but the risen Christ who lives and abides forever with those who believe in him. 3,000 people. I have no idea uh, because the record does not reveal the extent of activity, the prayer and the baptisms and the lives that were changed there forever. It doesn't go into a great deal of detail, but it does say, repent, be baptized, you too will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I recall one day in Kenya uh, when I was a missionary there, I was invited to be one of the preachers at a big, a very big youth rally. There were thousands of young people there. And then afterward, they had uh, an invitation for young people to come to know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And literally hundreds came forward and repented of their sins. And they wanted to be baptized right away. Now, this was near the foot of Mount Kenya. And Mount Kenya is capped with uh, snow. And there was a river coming down. Uh, I think we were in the town of Embu, if I remember correctly. And I remember that uh, two or three of us as pastors and myself as a missionary were asked to go into that river and baptize as many as who wanted to be baptized, repenting of their sins and turning away from sin and godlessness. And we baptized, I think I baptized somewhere between four and five hundred in that ice cold water. My legs were blue when I came out, but I'll tell you, my heart was alive with the fire of God, knowing that God had redeemed these young people in Kenya and they would bring about change in the country. The promise is to you and to your children and to as many as are far off. Well, we're 2,000 years later than that event, but I'll tell you this, the power of the Lord Jesus Christ has never changed and he still saves. So I ask you, whoever you are, repent, turn to God, be baptized in water and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit and live for him in the power of the Spirit from this day onward. God bless you. We'll see you the next study.